Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about casing. We're working on the tooling course and that subject is something I'm diving in a little bit more on the, on the course and I thought that's gonna be a really good video to go ahead and throw out there on its own just because I get so many questions on casing and usually, honestly, whenever I get a lot of, when I get people ask me about their tooling or they have questions, they want me to critique a tooling piece that they have or something like that, the number one problem that I see is that they've tooled it entirely too wet. Um, that They've cased it up so much that their tooling is a little bit mushy or maybe their bevels look like they've walked around a little bit there's not doesn't look like there was a lot of stability in the leather and so the casing is actually it seems to be a real big pain point a lot of people have trouble with that and um, and everybody has heard of the soaking method we're going to talk about that in just a minute i'm going to kind of show you the two different versions and kind of what i use and what i go through on casing because if you're casing a saddle fender it may be a little bit different than if you're casing a belt because of what we're putting on the back as far as a stiffener a liner something to keep that belt from stretching and and so I just want to touch on that a little bit here in this video, just to give you some recommendations and to show you what I use, which I think is a lot easier and I think it's a lot more manageable. And I prefer that method just because it helps me to control my casing a little bit more than the old soak and bag method. So we're going to go into that real quick and I'm going to show you both of those methods and kind of show you what I think about them. All right, so the first way to case, which is most traditional, which is what most people hear or read about or whatever, is take your dry piece of leather, you've got a sink or a bucket or whatever you've got. I've just got one of these utility sinks from Lowe's or anything like that. I keep this kind of always near my workstation. Right now, the water is not the cleanest that it could be. Uh, you want to try to keep that water as clean as possible. But what they usually say is you take your piece of leather, you soak it down into the water, and let it get completely saturated. If you read a lot of the um, books or, or different articles, things from years ago that were written about casing, they always tell you, you know, put it in there and wait for all the bubbles to stop coming out of the leather. Then pull that leather out and let it drip, dry a little bit, and then take it after you do that and take you just a plastic bag or a trash bag or something, put your leather in there, and then roll this up, get all the air out of it and then roll it up and then set it on a bench and let it set overnight. This traditional way of casing, it works really well. I will do that on some saddle parts like fenders, uh, back housings, things like that that are really thick, 13, 15 ounce or so. I uh, will soak it like that. I don't wait for the bubbles to completely stop because to me that's oversaturating it, but I will soak it pretty good. And then a lot of times I will let it sit in a bag till the next day, but that's because I'm tooling some other parts or something like that. Normally I don't spend that much time doing my casing that way just because it takes so much time. And so I'd prefer to go ahead and get started tooling and all that plus i'd go ahead and draw on the leather when it's dry so i've got my pattern completely drawn on there and so once i've cased it i want to kind of get the tooling and i'm not trying to get that perfect case so that i can do the artwork on there i've already done all the artwork it's already on the leather so um, i want to go ahead and get started tooling but i do want a good water penetration on there on some real heavy leather if you're tooling belts and wallets and different things like that you don't want to use this method in my opinion because you're going to get that leather uh too sad saturated and it's not going to tool very well you're going to have to wait a long time for it to dry out before you go to tool it now usually with this method what you're going to do if you do if you are doing this and you and you're using a lot of heavy leather you soak it in that water and then you put it in a bag and let it set overnight one thing you want to be careful with is mold so after a day or so you may start seeing some mold on this so if you are going to leave it for a few days put it in the refrigerator and that'll keep some of the mold from growing on that and then what you want to do is after that is you're going to want to take it out of the bag and then let it set back on the bench for um, it may take two or three hours for this to begin to dry out because we want this color to come back to the close to what it was before you got it wet so just before it's almost completely dry that's about the time to tool it i'll show you what that kind of color looks like but if you count that time plus the soaking time that casing process takes a, an enormous amount of time and we don't usually use that process in here because i don't want to devote that much time just to getting the leather just right for tooling and i haven't noticed a benefit from doing that so this is not the casing process that we follow on the majority of the stuff that we tool so the process that i use for casing is much simpler process i think 
tank it it gives you a little bit more versatility especially if it's kind of touch and go during the day you've got customers in the shop or you've got something you got to go run do with your wife or something if you know there's always something going on so you get started tooling then you got to come back to it anytime you're tooling something you can always use the bag method and put that in a bag if you've got it case just right put it in a bag um, get all the air out of it kind of roll it up put it on your bench and it'll hold that case for a pretty good while but then when you come back and you pull that out or even if you're just starting out with a piece and you want to get it cased up i prefer to use the water bottle method i think it's a lot easier it's a lot faster for me because i get interrupted a lot during the day between the phone and the front door so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and just take my leather i don't care what thickness i'm, I'm using you know if i'm using uh, 1315 like i said i will maybe do an initial dunk in the water i don't let it sit in there forever i just put it in there and get it nice and nice and uh, wet on there and get it cased and then I'll let it dry some and then as I'm going or when I'm starting I can just mist that leather and control the amount of water I'm putting into that so if you're tooling a like say a wallet back that's five ounce you don't want to saturate that piece of leather because it's going to get way too wet so you can use the water bottle and put a good coating of water on that top piece of leather i don't worry about wetting the back or anything like that because usually on those type of items i've got either blue tape that blue painters tape or i have poster board on the back as well that's another reason i don't soak it in the water because that's going to keep that leather from stretching as we're tooling it so on say like a wallet or a belt so i'll just miss the top get a good coat of water on there and let that set for a little bit let it begin to dry then we can go to carving most people tool their leather way too wet if you've been tooling for just a little while and you're just getting started and you're wondering why sometimes things look real mushy or you know when you bevel your stuff's walking all over the place and leather's really shifting a bunch it's because you're tooling that leather entirely too wet i would always say if you're if you're in doubt let it dry some more um, i would rather see you tooling too dry a leather than too wet of a leather because that leather if it's too oversaturated it loses its integrity and a lot of times the stamps won't perform the way they're supposed to perform and you're not you're definitely not going to get any kind of burnish color out of your leather um, and you're also going to be shifting that leather around got to remember when you especially on bevelers when you hit that beveler or that leather with that beveler in a cut you want that leather to go down not down and out or not over and under and shift this over so you want everything to be stable enough to where when you hit it with a beveler it just goes straight down doesn't make your your knife cut super wide looking and it doesn't mush everything around so if you're seeing some of that tool your leather a lot drier like i said i'd rather you be tooling it way too dry than way too wet so people a lot like i said everybody sees that deal in the books and stuff take that leather soak it in the water and then go to tooling it you don't need to do that it doesn't need to be that cased up the word casing in my opinion is just your ability to control the moisture level in your leather as you're tooling something else i like to do as i'm tooling is i may want certain areas of my tool work or the cadence of the tools that i'm using to be a different moisture le level on that leather so if i'm doing pear shading and things like that um, i may want it a little bit more wet than what i would if i'm doing bar grounding when i'm bar grounding that leather can almost be not cased at all fairly well dry because that'll keep my bar grounders from causing any kind of a hamburger or mushed effect going on in the in the background so a lot of times i'll do the bar grounders with that leather really really dry um, beveling kind of the same thing i want it i want it definitely cased but i don't want it overly cased so i'm usually pretty dry when i'm beveling as well um, and then you know knife work and stuff i'm usually a little more on the case side than i would be um, doing some of the beveling and stuff so there's a little range in there that that I play with in my casing that's going to be different than what somebody else may want. That's where I think the water bottle comes in way more handy for folks because it allows you to control the amount of water that's in that leather as you're tooling it based on your preference depending on where you're at in the tool work versus taking that piece of leather and completely saturating it in the water and then trying to time out your tooling process as the level is dropping of moisture in that leather. Um, I'd rather be in control of the moisture le level than waiting on it to dry out more so that I can do the next step or waiting on it to dry so I can even get started because it's too wet. So when it comes to casing, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Some people prefer to use a sponge, you know, a little canister with a sponge. If you go to a tooling class, that's usually what you're going to see. You're going to have a bowl with a little sponge in it. That's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, that does give you that ability to control the moisture in that leather. Again, you can kind of put more, more water on it than you may want to. You can get it over case too fast. So I think, I think the water bottle gives you a lot more control if you'll just take your leather, you know, when you're getting started, if you need, if you think it's too dry, whatever, just use a water bottle and just 
spray it down and then if you set this over there it'll only take a few minutes for this to go ahead dry on out and get to where you need to be and then go from there all right so these are both the pieces of leather that we just cased up just kind of show you real quick this is the one i dunked in the water now this is an older piece of leather it was over there in the scrap bin so you can see a lot lighter area here than around this edge that's just either from the lights or just from the leather being older um, sitting in there sitting around in the shop and stuff like that but this right here how, how this darkness is in this leather that is far too wet to try to do anything with i'm not even sure i would carve this leather right now when you're carving leather if it's cased correctly, then your knife should make a, a, an incision in that grain and then actually open just a little bit. The knife cut should and stay open. And if you're if you're carving on leather that is this wet, sometimes you'll even see just a hint of a little pool of water in front of that swivel knife blade as you're pulling it. That's far too wet. If you see any water in front of your blade as you're carving, you you should you're way too wet to be carving. And so like in this area right here where it's a lot drier, this is going to carve up much better than this dark area is right here so you always want to be sure that you're not overly wet like we were talking about before and in this piece of leather you can really see the difference here this dark dark color right here far too wet this area right here is getting pretty right here for doing any kind of carving but as you, you can also tell with this piece how thick it was that we soaked it this being that this dried out here but this hasn't this is going to take some time this may take up to an hour to really start to get the uh the dryness back that we need in order to do the carving versus this piece here we just sprayed with the water bottle and um it is probably maybe just a little bit dry here for carving but probably just right for beveling so just to kind of show you just kind of the color difference here i'd carve this one this one's probably a little drier to carve so i would probably wet this down again and let it set for a few minutes this has literally been sitting here for maybe a minute and i sprayed it twice while we were talking just a minute ago so you can see how fast it started to dry it seems kind of kind of different because you you're, well i don't want to have to spray my stuff every 15 minutes you won't have to as you get a, a really good level of moisture into that leather depending on the thickness that's there the less you'll have to spray it down the more it'll hold its case as it's going along but you're not going to go past that point to where you're like in there with this one where you've got to sit and wait and so that's why i prefer the water bottle um, and if you if you've got a belt that you want to carve and you just want to get a really good case on it first and you're using the paper or the painters tape on the back so you really can't dunk it in the water you can go ahead and just really mist this down really good um, put a bunch of water on there and then let it set for maybe 30 minutes or so and come to it and start carving and tooling if you want that's the nice thing about the water bottle you can kind of adjust your casing method how you get a belt prepped up and ready to go to tool and you can kind of have a little bit more control over that versus just the dunking method that most people when they start out are using and so um, like i said unless you're tooling saddle fenders you got a pair of them you want to soak them put them in a bag get started on them tomorrow that's fine um, but that's that's more of a saddle maker's case than a than, than a, a personal carry case or, or you know somebody making um, belts and wallets and things like that using smaller leathers i would highly recommend sticking with a water bottle or even a sponge and a bowl versus any kind of dunking method to uh, a dunking and sacking method to get your case right but that's just some of my thoughts on casing like i said everybody's got their own opinion on how it should be done everybody has their own method uh kind of try a bunch of different ones talk to some different people use the one that works for you then i appreciate you guys watching we'll see you all in the next video